Okay, we had Powell speak today during the market session. Uh, his previous uh, message was no rush to cut. It was a greatest hit, one of his one of his big top singles because all the other uh, Fed officials in the same tune. Rush to cut. Now his latest hit is higher for longer. Higher for longer. Actually, Powell expressed. He expressed lack of concern about the hot CPI reports. Now he's doing a U-turn showing disappointment. Inflation is starting to tick back up. You got to remember the Fed uses its favorite gauge of inflation is the PCE inflation data. And it's the most inaccurate one of them all. It's no surprise that the Fed uses it. That's why they told us that inflation was transitory so long is because the CPI data is more accurate. Though not perfect by any means, it is more accurate than the PCE calculations. That's why Powell was telling us, ah, don't worry about that. That was his previous position uh, with the hot CPI data in the last Fed meeting. And again, I told you eventually we'll show concern, we'll get the, you know, the June cut canceled. Now we've seen the July cut. You know, we had seven cuts priced into the market, way over optimistic. It's gone down to one, two, and you've got some, some economists saying none. I've been warning you that this is coming, that the market was being unrealistic. You know how, you know how many, uh, how bad the economy has to be for the Fed to cut seven times, six or five? Pretty bad. Again, if we're going to have a banking crisis, there's a ton of evidence that that's going to happen, and that may cause the Fed sooner rather than later what they're expecting, start seeing more problems immediately with the banks. Right now, Yahoo Finance, correct, Powell is signaling a rate cut delay after inflation surprises. Okay, I've been expecting inflation to tick back up. It's doing that now. We've had three hot reports, CPI and the PPI data. And one of the reasons why the Fed doesn't really, wasn't really alarmed by that immediately with the, you know, two, they look at that PCE data. Why they told us inflation was transitory for so long is because they're looking at this inflation gauge that miscalculates inflation. So Powell now finally having the light bulb come on his head about inflation. So again, so again, another negative for the market. The market still has too many rate cuts priced into it, even though I'm down a little bit off of the highs now. Probably going to see a bigger sell-off. Two things that are really driving it lower, really three, uh, the strength in the dollar, the strength in the 10-year yield, and the tensions in the Middle East. Again, we have drawn on this channel. We've had it for a very, very long time. We've talked about this channel. Uh, about breaking the downward trend line and breaking above overhead resistance. I've talked about that at great length of detail. Again, if the market attempts some kind of rebound, the 10 year can pull back. But again, it could just keep going up to this upper channel line before it does pull back. Again, S&P got a candle of indecision. You get a candle of indecision on the 10 year. So we'll be watching that. Uh, and then we'll be watching further volatility with tensions in the Middle East and drop down you know, to test the 20 week moving averages that I've been talking about, be the 100 day moving averages in the daily time frame. we broken the 50s or, um, you know, do we attempt immediate recovery, get an immediate response that rattles the market uh, from Israel? Or is there a delayed response and the market attempts some kind of recovery? Watching 50 period moving averages and 10 week moving averages. If we hold below them, that's bearish. Back above it, then that's bullish. Now, this is the probability of rate cuts for 2024. And again, it was at seven. And expected, it was expected that we were going to get a, a a June cut. That was canceled. Then the July cut got canceled. Okay. And again, it's expected now that the rates are going to stay the same. And then we're not going to get the first cut until September at this point now. And there's only a 45.6% chance that that's going to happen. And this is uh, the probabilities right after Powell spoke after the close of the market. And if you look right here, again, it's expected that we're either going to get one cut for the year, either in September or in November or December, and then an additional cut going into 2025. These are for 2025. The market's really looking at 2024 right now. And again, we've gone from the market being overly optimistic, pricing in seven cuts. That's what the whole rally was about. Oh, we're going to have seven cuts. We're going to have the scrape old market. And again, we're pricing in one. It's been hovering between one and two.
market never corrected. Fed fund futures readjusted. The stock market had priced in seven cuts. Just now is starting to sell off some P down almost 5%. Around that level, I didn't see the actual close. Take a look at it. NASDAQ was pretty much flat today. S&P was, was slightly lower by 10 points. NASDAQ was slightly higher. The Dow, it's losing streak. We had an update. But the VIX was down, and it's stowing right here at this resistance level in the weekly time frame that I've been talking about. Uh, if the VIX can pull back, if uh, ten, the 10-year and the dollar pulls back, then, again, you could get uh, an attempted rebound. But if we see the VIX soar with the hawkish Fed now after Powell and maybe getting rattled by Middle East tensions, whatever the case may be, then again, we can go a whole lot lower before we get any kind of rebound. The VIX is predicting an update for the S&P 500 tomorrow. Had this surge of greater than 10% uh, there on Friday, and that didn't happen. The S&P was down both days. There's an 85% chance that we have an update. It didn't happen. But we got another surge of 10% yesterday, so that means the next two days, today it didn't happen, but tomorrow, the VIX is predicting that we'll have an update in the S&P. That doesn't mean a bottom. That just means an update. It could be a bottom. We get If we build upon it to, to rebound back up or high or maybe a short-term bottom, but our market's going to be further rattled by tensions in the Middle East. Are they going to be further rattled by a hawkish Fed with yields climbing higher 10-year and others? Again, I'll be watching. Uh, do we begin to uh, see the VIX pull back or does it just go on and surge I told you when the VIX starts going parabolic, the signals don't play out. But if it, you know, if 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 we don't go parabolic, more often than not, they do. Where again, if you get a, a move of greater than ten percent, like what we had uh, yesterday, uh, within the next two sessions, usually you get an update on the S and P five hundred. Eighty five percent of the time, fifteen percent of the time, it fails. Uh, we got on Friday uh, has now failed. What happens with this one? But if we're going to get a bigger rebound, the signals would have to turn back to bullish. I've had a bunch of signals, uh, trending signals, momentum signals, all turning bearish, momentum going negative. It's about in great length and detail in my last update. I'll link that at the end of this video. Please support the channel with the link directly below that allows me to be able to provide you this information. These sponsors just a direct relationship with you. Like the indicators. If you like the charts, please let me know that by supporting the channel. I do need your help at this time. Please consider helping out today. Anything helps. Follow the link below to take you to a secured site. You can donate any amount you want. Thank you for your consideration for that. I've been just showing you some of my different signals. And here again, we found support. All the way up. Look at the arrows. All the way up. Support, 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 support. And then we broke uh, with the bearish engulfing. Tried to get back above and couldn't do it. And then turned, tried it again right here. Couldn't do it. And we ended up turning back down. So again, now, now resistance. Now red. Again, my oscillators are all going red now. Validating that. So just wanted to show you some, some more of my signals. Various uh, trading systems, they are all turning bearish with momentum and with trending signals. Uh, if we're going to get a rebound, that, that would have to turn back up. So again, the signals are playing out, are getting a post-Fed sell-off. Now, the risk-reward model, again, it rolled over, forming a divergence up at the top here. I talked about that when it happened. We've been down now for three weeks. And I just looked at the close. It looks like S&P is down uh, just under around 4.5%. The highs, we know NASDAQ and Dow have dropped more. Watching, when we find a bottom, do we recycle back up and get something like this, where we had this top over here? We recycle back up and get a lower high, like what we had at the September high after the July peak. So I'll be watching to see what happens here. But again, three weeks down, versions are playing out now out either way we can go back up and we can still try to make a higher high and form a divergence and happened at this top that happened at the 2020 top but we got the lower high scenario in july so we'll be watching to see if we get a a, a much much bigger soft right here right now attempt to rebound the dow still has a bunch of gaps on it they may not fill it very well could at some point don't get me wrong we could drop further i'm just telling you the uh risk was there which i talked about at the time risk reward model and that's now playing out closely because it has all these gaps on it nasdaq and s p filled 
the, the, the gaps, uh, not the one from last week, but the previous gaps, uh, not the one from uh, late last week, but uh, which is right here. Dow's forming a possible bullish falling wedge here. Uh, and again, we've got these bullish divergences in the 60 minute time frame. The Dow broke its losing streak. Uh, it had a, uh, a multiple day losing streak since we began to turn down over here, since we had this breakaway gap lower. I'll be watching these gaps. You've got one here, you've got one up here, and you've got one right here. You've got all these gaps uh, on the Dow. The NASDAQ and S&P filled this one and this one already. The Dow never did. It's leading the charge lower. If the Dow has peaked for a lower high, and again, we may not fill these gaps until a later date, but if we do attempt some kind of rebound, I want to be watching the gaps on the Dow. And the one up here would come in near our 78.6 Fibonacci area. I'm watching these divergences on the 68 minute charts. Again, I told you it's still forming the Dow gapped higher and then kind of consolidated here. Still may go lower, but again, are forming the multiple point divergences on the 60 minute chart. So we attempt some kind of recovery risk of tensions in the Middle East. Uh, Drill has, uh, Israel uh, officials have come out and said that they are going to respond to the attack uh, over the weekend by Iran. Currently, they are putting all their ducks in a row in their northern border, according to news outlets. It turns about if they do anything, will be an attack on their northern border. So just some things to be paying attention to. I told you this could rattle the markets. Sometimes these geopolitical issues rattle markets, other times they don't. Will we get an immediate response here during the week here, or will it be delayed over until the weekend or the following weekend? Iran responded, as I've said, they waited. It was a delayed response. We'll see what happens. But again, that is an issue that could rattle markets. Had some volatility this week as yields have jumped higher. And as we've seen a bit of volatility uh, from uh, the Middle East tensions over the weekend. Saw the Dow and the market gap higher and then go lower. And again, Dow's kind of consolidating. S&P has gone a little bit lower. Be watching these divergences. But I'm talking about the Dow because, uh, again, even if you don't like to trade the Dow or you don't like the Dow, I'm watching these gaps on the Dow, and the Dow has led the charge lower, dropping nearly 6% from the peak. Dow's now played catch-up. S&P is still lagging behind the Dow. It's important to be paying attention to this, and I talked about this double top on both the Dow and the S&P uh, back at the at the uh, top there. S&P went three points higher. The Dow got a lower high, so we'll be watching these gaps. I talked about that we're taking up a 10-week moving average. I'll be watching to see if we remain below it or if we try to bounce you know, get back above it and try to bounce. If we get back above it and try to bounce, you might form a divergence on the RSI. And again, like over here, we went slightly above it. In 2020, the same thing. Now over here, we got a uh, a lower high when uh, this bound on the cast occurred and we moved to a new high on the RSI there. There was no divergence present there, but you did confirm a lower high stochastic. So again, do we see that happen or do we have the peak in and we just start going down to the 20 and we come back up and get a lower high and something like what we had over here. So I'm going to be watching the RSI, but it could be that we attempt again to still try to go higher. I'm not going to rule that out. Signals begin to turn back to bullish. Being bearish and we take up a 20 week moving average, we can get a bigger drop in the market. And if we hold below the 10 week moving average, that's extremely bearish and we can go a whole lot lower. If we drop below the 10 week moving average, and we sold off, couldn't get back above it, try, tested it, couldn't get back above it. And then we finally did and we overthrew the 20, but got rejection there as they've had a bearish cross. So just some things to be paying attention to. If that happens, we might see a triple divergence on some things like the NAAIM exposure index, which is active money managers. Again, you could still form a triple divergence here, much like what you had over here. You had a divergence and then in November, and then you turned down, you went slightly above this level. Look at that, just slightly above it. And then boom, it means, you know, we hit a peak of 52.65 or so, 64 or something like that. Could still go up and hit the trend line and reach the 5,300 level and then turn down or go down to the 200 and still do, or the 20 week moving average and still do it. But Again, I'm looking for a topping process here down from the rising wedge. And again, as I've talked about, if we do try to rebound back up, uh, you might hit that upper channel line one more time, which again, it's moving higher to the right of the chart. So it would take us to a new high. If we don't, if we make a lower high like over here, you know, rebound back up, 
uh, then again, watching, do we hold below that 10 week moving average? Should we go lower and hold below the 10 week and then go down or, or get back above it and have it fail? Um, tried to get back above it over here. We tried to get back above the 10 week, but it failed uh, there in September of last year. This is something I'm watching closely, but the diversion so far, it is played out. And again, told that there's no way that possible this was going to happen and it is happening. Uh, but again, I do uh, want to present the topping process possibility of a lower high or a higher high because it could be either one. We don't know. Side does not have a divergence yet. Other indicators do. Quickly time frame for the S&P. Right now we're down nearly one and a half percent for the week. 1.41 to be exact. We'll be watching that 10 week moving average and we're getting a bearish reversal of conditions in the weekly time frame that I talked about yesterday. Now I have the MACD rolling over. So again, we might go down to that 20 week moving average before all is said and done, before we get a meaningful bounce, we'll be watching. Uh, but like I said, the Dow is, and the S&P, they're forming bullish diversions on their 60 minute charts. Uh, still may be multiple points already seeing that develop. But again, uh, just watching to see we're now down three weeks in a row here Middle East tensions give us a big drop in the market. We just see the, you know, the diversions is down flat. We just see the bottom fall out of the market. I'd be watching the 50 week moving average down here at the 4600 uh, area, depending on if the markets become alarmed, the tensions in the Middle East. Just zoom out here for a second, show you the RSI. Now I talked about this a moment ago, again, about a possible diversions here. If we go back up and try to hit this level, that's what happened over here, okay? We had the peak in November. We went back up and we formed a diversion slightly above that. And same thing here, just slightly above it. We moved just slightly above the previous peak. That would take us to the 5,300 area in all likelihood. But here at the uh, 2020 top right here, you had the same diversions. You didn't have one here in, uh, in, in July of last year. Just as possible that we have peaked and the next rally that we get gives us a lower high. But again, it's something worth paying attention to. Uh, if we try to form a divergence, and it very well could be that we try to get a divergence on the RSI. We already have it on other indicators, but we still may try to form it on the RSI and get another reference point of a divergence on other indicators. As I talked about yesterday, in the weekly time frame, we're getting the bearish reversal of conditions. Okay, if we close below the 10-week moving average, red bar, you get the red cloud here. We're taking out the lower boundary of the clouds. So you're getting the, it's flipping to red. That's what that little red arrow means right there. Then again, that's going to be bearish. The momentum shift, and now we're seeing trend signals turn bearish as of last week. We're starting to turn now this week, more turning. Below the 10 week here, we dropped and lost a 50. You hold below the 50, then that's bearish. If you rebound above these levels, you can get a counter trend. Watch the 50 in the daily. Watch the, uh, the 10 here, week, and 200 day in the 60 minute time frame. You hold below those levels, that's bearish. You get back above them, you can rebound. Quickly, we saw, I was watching to see if we get the awesome oscillator turning back up to get an immediate diversion, bounce off the 50 or break the 50. We broke the 50. If we still try to go in positive territory, you still may attempt to rebound should you get above the 50, should you get above the 10 week moving average and the 200 in the 60 minute time frame. But right now, you've got the 10 crossing the 20, losing the 50. This is telling us we're either going down now with the bearish reversal of conditions we had back over here, you're either going down or going sideways in a topping process if we attempt a recovery. I talked about the double top over here. And again, this peak, it only went three points higher. This peak right here, it hit the trend line. I told you sellers were lurking there. It was the Fed meeting. I told you that we were going to go up and try to hit that trend line and get a post-Fed sell-off. What's happening? A post-Fed sell-off. Still may be, still try a larger topping process. But if we hold below this 50 right now, go to the 100 period. In the daily, we can go to the 20 week in the weekly time frame. S&P was down almost 10 and a half points, down 0 0.21 percent. Again, down right around four and a half percent or so, or lower than that at the uh, at the lows of the session. But rebounded, got a candle of indecision. This could be a continuation, or we could attempt to rebound. If we attempt to rebound, we're we'll watching the gap fill from last week at our 10 day moving average. Notice the 10. We broke the 10, and here you tried to recover above it. It failed. You got the bearish engulfing there that now has been confirmed and gotten the follow through by the way which is what exactly what happened in july but you're getting rejection at the 10 week moving average 10 day moving average i should say with these other peaks right here 
to 50. Do we recover or do we get a bigger sell off? You got a candle of indecision today. Bullish divergence is on the 60 minute charts. Same thing, candle of indecision on NASDAQ. We have tried to turn momentum back to bullish. We've been going sideways for seven weeks. We're now breaking down out of that range after seven weeks of going sideways. And again, candle of indecision here. Uh, the 10 has dropped below the 20, but they're again, they're both above the 50. We'll be watching to see if they drop below the 50. NASDAQ hold below the 50 or an attempt to recovery. But momentum signals, trending signals, they're bearish now. We've taken out the 50. Now we've taken out the 10 week moving average. There's a NASDAQ weekly chart. Again, taking out that 10 week. Do we drop down here and then attempt to rebound and maybe form a divergence or a confirmation of a lower high? Didn't do that very well, but you can see what I'm talking about. Do we get something like this? You know, go up here or go get a lower high like we did back over here? We'll be watching. Go below the 10 week moving average, that's going to be bearish. If you try to get back above it, you can get a recovery for a lower high or a higher high. We'll be watching to see if we hold below the 10 week moving average, but you can see we're trying to get the bearish reversal of conditions here in the weekly time frame. The S&P 60 minute chart. Again, we have the bullish divergence is developing here on the S&P. We've got it on the Dow. Now, again, I've just drawn a parallel boundary from this peak right here. There's no connecting point and I've just connected it from this point to this point right here. Uh, again, that may not be done, but you have the possibility of a bullish falling wedge right here and a breakout potentially, uh, but we're consolidating down here. So again, we'll see if we try to rebound. You have uh, the gap fill, you have the gap fill back up here, right here at the, uh, just under the 5,200 area. So again, I'll be watching and that's again where resistance be if we do attempt to rebound uh, and our 200 period moving average, a black line you see right there. Now, we're oversold. The stochastic is oversold, but the MACD has no bullish divergence. We have it on the RSI. We have no bullish divergence on the MACD. So again, does the divergence end up uh, failing and give us nothing more than a little tiny bounce and, and we see a drop. Again, the negative divergences on the daily, the weekly, and the monthly charts are starting to play out now. As it's doing that, we're, we've dropped, and again, and sideways, look, we peaked here on S&P. NASDAQ peaked back over here the day after the Fed. That was back in, in mid-March. Peaked there, we only went three points higher, but we went sideways for a while, dropped and went back up here, got a lower high. So people go, oh, possibly the market could drop. Not, nah, and then it drops. I'll be watching, again, what becomes of these divergences, but again, the signals remain bearish. For recovery, they'd have to turn back to bullish. The signals in great length and detail in yesterday's video. Didn't uh, watch that. You didn't get a chance to see it. Go watch that. I went through the signals. Momentum signals and trending signals have turned bearish. Just quickly, uh, I talked about the support level in here, possible head and shoulders. We had this gap right here and we came back and filled that gap and we just kept going. We talked about this area right in here uh, as a support level. We've taken that out and I talked about gap support down here and that's where we're at right now so if we take this out then you have the gap fill down over here uh, in this uh, mid uh, 4900 mid to high 4900 area so if we take that out that's uh, that's the next level of support that means we'd be going down towards the 100 in the daily we'd be going down towards the 20 week moving average if we can bounce here at gap support if we can bounce at gap support you have this gap fill up here, again, just under 5,200. And again, I've drawn a parallel boundary here. Now we've become oversold here. Doesn't mean we bought them. We became oversold here. It just gave us a bounce right there. Became oversold uh, here and here, and it formed a divergence, but it just gave us a bounce. And we've been getting rejection with those bounces at the 50. Here, uh, the little green line is the 50. And we overthrew it here, we turned down, we came up, we got rejection at it here, we turned down that, and the cloud, the trending cloud there, uh, this cloud over here, and then we turned down and tried to break the 200 again, we took it out here, took it out here, tried to get back above it, it failed where? At the 50, the 50 period moving average. Now we're below the 50, we rebound back up, and we get above the 50 and the 200, which have now had a death cross, and you can see the little orange line, that's a support and resistance line, clear these levels then you can try to fill the gap right here, okay? And if we take out gap support, then you can go lower and try to fill the gap. So again, which which is going to take place? Filling the gap 
or an attempted recovery back up. And if the market begins to get rattled, rounding tensions in the Middle East, we can end up going a whole lot lower. Be watching, but we've taken out the 200. Again, you take out the 200, in the 60 minute time frame, you hold below it, print parameter goes negative, it's bearish. The, the uh, 10 week moving average, take out the 20, the daily, and now the 50. Again, we're seeing signs of weakness. Here it is in the 60 minute time frame. If we zoom out, again, print parameter has gone negative. As long as it remains negative and we're below the 200, prices can go lower. Now, again, the Dow has a couple of gaps that haven't filled, a bullish falling wedge, SPs that gap support. Can we bounce? Well, maybe, but again, you take out this level, you've got the gap fill. We'll be looking at Fibonacci retracements, the 20 week moving average, the 100 and the 200 period in the daily time frame. But again, we're seeing weakness. Do we just now move into a free fall? Some type of attempted recovery short term. But again, the signals are bearish. You could see something like this where you get a sell off here after the July peak, turn back up and you attempted recovery here. We were going back and forth showing really we were just kind of going sideways. We ended up getting rejection around the 200 period moving average. So could see something like that if we attempt an immediate recovery. But if the markets are rattled by tensions in the Middle East, Powell's hawkish tone now about recent inflation reports, again, the market could be rattled, rattled further. By the way, same thing on the NASDAQ, we're seeing weakness. It broke down from its triangle. Bitcoin broke down from its triangle. They're doing the same thing. Very interesting. Uh, again, we can back test. You can try to move to the moving averages, moving back into the trading range, but we've taken out, we've taken out the lower boundary of the triangle and we've taken out gap support here and we're back testing it right now, this little area right here. Now we violated it here and rebounded, gapping higher. You know, do we see something like that and back test and then get a bigger sell off or, uh, you know, back test the triangle or attempt a recovery or is this back test right here? of this lower boundary where we have gap support right there. Uh, does that take us back down to try to fill the gap down here? That does at 17,000, uh, just under 17,500. So again, we could go down, you know, into, uh, you know, 17,000, four or 500, 300, whatever, uh, if we get further volatility. Now in the 60 minute time frame, you're oversold and you're trying to rebound. Again, we've had other rebounds, but it's only given us you know, counter trends for lower high. We peaked the day after the Fed. Remember I talked about post Fed sell off. Time to get a rally with the Fed like we had here. We went slightly above this level right here, about 30 points. We couldn't close above that high. We turned back down and that was it. And we sold off. Now, again, it's still possible. We try to rebound. Signals can turn back to bullish get a larger topping process, but right now signals have turned back to bearish. We'll be watching. Do we get rejection here? Do we get rejection, rally and get rejection at the lower boundary of the, the broken tri triangle? Try to rally up to the moving averages if we attempt a recovery or do we just break on down further and we're just back testing the gap support area, the, the rectangle. And it, we've gone sideways for seven weeks and we broke down. Bitcoin did the same thing sideways for about six weeks and it's broken down now. Again, signals have to turn bullish if we're going to see some kind of recovery at a larger chopping process or if we the market's rattled by tensions in the Middle East or Powell. Yields are soaring, dollar soaring, which I've been warning you about over and over again, the breakouts and, and, and so forth. Dollar in the 10 year was going to lead to volatility. And maybe it still leads to a larger topping process. It could if we see those instruments, uh, the 10 year and the dollar pull back. It is playing out and we are seeing the selling pressure. There's so much complacency, you know, people go, oh, this time it's different. You know, and it's not. We peaked a month ago, okay? And now we've seen the sell-off with the series of lower highs and lower lows. NASDAQ's broken down from the rectangle, but again, a candle of indecision. It actually had a positive close. S&P did not. It closed positive by almost seven points, up 0.41%. Uh, again, these divergences are playing out. Uh, again, if we can recover back above the 50-period moving average, back move back into the... Uh, Trading range, you got a shot at a recovery if signals can turn back to bullish. If they don't, then look out below. We are now seeing with this breakdown, we're seeing the MACD go negative with the break of gap support and this trading range breaking down from this trading range. We are going negative. So again, that could open the door for a bigger drop, gap fill, or even 
filling some of these other gaps back over here. If we get a big old drop, markets freak out uh, with tensions in the Middle East. We'll see what happens. Again, times these uh, geopolitical issues, markets, other times they don't. We'll see what happens. The S&P broke down from our rising wedge pattern. That has been, it got confirmed immediately. I told you right here, it, maybe we just get a lower high like we did in July. It, that exact same thing happened again here where you had a bearish engulfing and it was confirmed days later. And we confirmed it, got a follow through uh, with the bearish engulfing here. We confirmed the breakdown of the trend line and later again, got the follow through. Uh, again, the 50, but you're at the cloud. Watch the support levels I'm talking about. You've got your 200 way down here. If I bring up the 100 period moving average, I've mentioned that a couple of times. It's just below the cloud. So if we get a bigger drop, you want to watch a 100 period in the daily and the 20 week moving average in the weekly. Should we get a bigger drop? And if we get a, you know, a, 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 a pretty ugly drop, again, the 200 period here and the 50 week moving average in the weekly time frame. The MACD is now going negative. Again, uh, if the bulls don't step up to the plate and turn this up right now and try to get a diversions right here or confirmation of a lower high, then we can go lower. Okay, if you go into negative territory uh, and stay there, you can get a bigger drop in the market in the daily time frame. Uh, when the MACD went into positive territory, we, we bottomed out October and it's been in positive territory. You've had crisscrosses back and forth, but now you're going negative. So either we're going to firm up right here, right now, or a little, go a little bit lower and firm up. If you remain negative, uh, you can open the door for a much bigger drop. 